Hello, I'm Jonathan Swift, the Editor-in-Chief of Post Magazine Insurance Age. And welcome to this, the first in a three-part series looking at professionalism in the broken, broking market. For the first instalment, I am joined by Alistair Stewart of the Chartered Insurance Institute and Chris Corns of Corns O'Hara to look at the drivers and benefits of seeking chartered insurance broker status. Chris, I'll come to you first of all. Can I just ask you, really, what were the key drivers behind you and your firm deciding to become a chartered insurance broker? It was an opportunity uh, for the company uh, to strive for uh, a greater achievement, success, uh, a badge of office, um, uh, you know, a sign of professionalism and integrity within a marketplace which, you know, has, um, has lost some of that focus in recent years. We also thought that within our own organisation it would um, enable people to feel a part of something special, unique. Uh, there are not many brokers who are uh, chartered uh, brokers and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I'd, I'd you know, encourage all brokers to strive for. Can I ask, I mean, was it driven very much from the top from yourself and the other directors within the firm? Um, it was. We're lucky enough to have um, someone within the firm, Natalie, who um, is a member of the Local Insurance Institute, uh, and uh, she persuaded me of the benefits. Uh, slightly, I was uh, uh, initially, as you always be as a business owner, had, re had some reserve. Uh, it had been, you know, 20 years since I'd taken my exams, and actually, when the um, CII representative looked at the uh, points that we qualified for. Uh, we were five points short, and um, uh, you know, unfortunately, that meant <clears throat> that I would uh, have to finish my ACII. I had eight out of nine, and uh, long regretted not getting the ninth. Uh, and now, luckily, uh, I say with some reservation, uh, I have my final exam on, on Monday. Excellent. Can I just ask about? Um the, the firm. I mean, were there other hurdles internally within the firm to, to, to become in charter? Yes. Um, like anything new, you know, change is an issue within all uh, commercial organisations and in our lives. And uh, you've got to be able to persuade the staff to embrace change. I'm very pleased to, um, you know, say that they have embraced the change. And uh, in fact, we've seen more confidence come from the staff through having this. Uh, chartered status in the way both they represent themselves and they talk to their clients. If I come to you Alistair, obviously you've spoken to quite a lot of brokers out there, do you get the sim similar kind of feedback from other broking firms about the kind of I suppose the other the hurdles they have to kind of get over to become chartered? Yeah I, th I think different companies have, have different hurdles they have to overcome. We've, we've got 72 charter brokers across the country, but because of the size of some of these companies, that means there's a charter broker really in about 175, 180 towns and cities across the country. Each one of them faces a different challenge to becoming chartered. The one thing I'd, I'd probably say is that it's, it's not an incredibly complex process. Uh, it's really about uh, understanding clearly what levels of qualification you have in your company, particularly at board level, it's very important in a charter company. Um, and then all throughout the company, there's, it's a kind of points mean prizes system. You need to get to 50 points. That's the qualification criteria. And that might be through professional qualifications. It might be uh, through continuous professional development. So each, each type of company has a different type of challenge. Uh, some companies are right in place right now who could become chartered very easily. Others would have quite a journey to go on to, to meet the charter criteria. I'll come back to you, Chris. I mean, obviously, as Alistair mentions there, um, you are actually in quite a select um, group of chartered insurance brokers. Do other brokers look at you differently now you are chartered? I, I, it's a good question. It's too early to say. Uh, there is an awful lot of competition within our uh, broking industry, as we know. It certainly gives us the opportunity to say to clients, uh, do you know that there are 3,500 broking firms in the UK? and um, less than 2% have chartered status. And only recently uh, I, I was sat down with a chartered accountancy practice and I thought of, you know, with this interview ahead, actually I thought well of mentioning it. And it was um, rewarding to see the reaction. Uh, this was a case that we were pitching for and it did give a positive reaction. With regard to other brokers, we are a competitive animal, aren't we? Yeah. And I'm sure that if the broker in your area or your city uh, attains chartered status, then that is a spur for the brokers to decide to follow. 
And the fact I could turn on its head as well, I mean, what about insurance companies? Do they look at you differently because you are a chartered insurance broker? Uh, you know, if you ask any insurance broker about insurance companies, uh, sometimes they'll find it very hard to say anything positive. And uh, regretfully, no, but let's hope it's coming. Uh, you know, we all wish insurance companies to remember their principles as brokers. And it would be nice for them to differentiate between a broker with charter status and one with, uh, that hasn't. Unfortunately, these days, it's too much about the size of business you can transfer or the, the size of your account. But I, I, that's unfair, and it's a generalism. I, I think it'll definitely come. You know, there is, there is a momentum to arrive here, and I'm sure it's well on its way, and it will rapidly increase. Alistair, do you get that sense as well about the insurance companies starting to perhaps appreciate brokers that are chartered? Well, the Chartered Broker uh, Award was created three or four years ago. Uh, we, this year we created the Chartered Insurance, Insurer Award, which I think will start to, to create some momentum there. We have, uh, we have a number of companies who are, who are now chartered. Uh, Amlin are chartered, uh, Allianz, Chubb, more. We expect more to become chartered. And I think once one, they're not becoming chartered because they think it's, it's something to take lightly. I think they're doing it because they see a value. And if they see the value for themselves, I would hope they'd see the value for the chartered insurance broker. We were at the UK Broker Summit uh, a couple of weeks ago and we asked 30 of the, of the UK's largest brokers, you know, what, what do you want out of chartered? And one of the things that came through really strongly was that they wanted some kind of acknowledgement from, from the insurers. Now, whether that acknowledgement is in terms of access to product, whether it's in terms of better reward, whether it's in terms of just being better regarded, uh, that's what the charter brokers want. Well, that's what brokers in general wanted, uh, a, a recognition of the effort that they've put in to making their companies professional companies. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Chris. Well, I hope you all join me for the second instalment in this series when I'll be joined by Tony Richardson of Barnet & Barnet to discuss her firm's experience of being a chartered insurance broker. Until then, goodbye.